The FEI turns a blind eye to roll cur with elite riders in elite level competition. bitch and welcome back to another video of me talking about people I hate. This video endeavors to examine the persistent issue of equine welfare in elite riding competitions and poses the question, in light of repeated disregard by both equestrians and the governing body, the FEI, is it appropriate to continue classifying riding as a sport when obvious animal abuse and animal welfare violations are present in elite level riding competitions. As many of you may be aware, FEI has recently released their new 2023 rulebook, and in this rulebook, as far as anyone can see, they have completely removed any verbiage regarding roll cur, whereas in all their previous rulebooks years following, they had clear guidelines outlining their stance and regarding roll cur as an equine welfare issue. Many people speculate that FEI has recently made these changes to their rule book, removing all of their verbiage on roll cur and condoning roll cur, because over the last few years, FEI has been repeatedly called out for not reprimanding elite level competition riders for using roll cur and hyperflexing their horses in not just training, warm ups, but in the competitions themselves. So I guess FEI's response to people criticizing them and saying that judges at elite levels do not hold these riders responsible and accountable for their actions and for abusing animals, FEI just decided to completely remove it from their new rule books. So that way, I guess they can't be labeled as hypocrites. Year after year, elite level riders are continuously called out and FEI does nothing about it. So I guess FEI is just sick of hearing from everybody. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to know a little bit more about FEI removing their rules from their rule book, I recommend Shelby's video. She does a really good job of going over exactly what rules were removed. I don't want to get too in depth into that in this video because that's not my main issue. Because honestly, I don't think FEI ever even and really cared about roll cur. They only pretended to care because back in 2010, people created so much outrage around this issue that they were forced to do something about it and add it to their rule book. So if you are unfamiliar with what roll cur is, let me explain it. Roll cur is a controversial training technique used in equestrian sports, particularly in dressage. It involves riding a horse with its head and neck stretched out and down in an extended position, often using force or tight reins to achieve and maintain this posture. The technique has been widely criticized by animal welfare organizations, many equestrian enthusiasts, and veterinarians who all argue that it can cause cause physical and psychological harm to a horse. Despite all these concerns, the use of roll cur has not been universally banned and continues to be practiced in some equestrian circles. Roll cur is essentially the hyperflexed position of a horse's neck. Okay guys, so I want to explain to you a little bit what hyperflexion is. So this is Link, as you guys know, everyone knows Link. Up here we have his extensor muscles and then his flexor muscles below. And then up top we have his nuchal ligament, which runs all the way from right here down his spine 
And this ligament is the ligament that is hyper-stressed during roll curl, or mostly hyper-stressed during roll curl out of all the others. And as you can see, I want you to watch his nuchal ligament, which again is all up here. And I want you to see how the nuchal ligament reacts when he becomes hyperflex. Come here, buddy. So we're gonna bend him, hyperflex him. So see how it's already uncomfortable for him and he doesn't wanna do it? So I have to release the pressure very quickly with him because it's uncomfortable. Most horses don't like being hyperflexed. Actually, no horse likes being hyperflexed. So what hyperflexion does is it actually puts four times the amount of pressure or more on your horse's nuchal ligament down their neck and their spine while the horse is in this hyperflex roll curb position versus when your horse is just in a relaxed position. So like this, let's get him to, no, no, I'm not asking for a hug. This would be a relaxed position or even on vertical relaxed position. So I want you guys to take your thumb and pull the thumb down. As you can see, when I pull my thumb down, you can see my tendon, how it reacts with the rest of my hand like that. <laughs> when you pull into a hyperflexed position like this, imagine holding your thumb in a hyperflexed position like this for long periods of time. Now let's say that you've had your thumb in a hyperflexed position for five minutes. Imagine what your thumb is gonna feel like when you finally release it. To summarize, any neck position achieved through force is almost definitely causing physical or psychological damage to a horse and should not be condoned or accepted no matter how you get to that point. So even in the beginning when FEI created these initial rules, they never really cared. There were always loopholes for riders, especially riders at elite levels, to continue with these abusive training practices. One study even shed light on how Rolker has increased in training methods among equestrians since the 90s. The aim of this study was to determine whether the head angulation of elite dressage horses has changed over the last 25 years and whether head angulation correlates with the competition score awarded. Head angle was measured from videos recorded during the Grand Prix test at the 1992 Olympic Games in the 2008 World Cup Final. During collected canter, CC, collected trot, CT, passage, PA, and Piaf, PI. Head angulations were BHV, behind the vertical, and CC, and CT in both 1992 and 2008. The likelihood of being behind the vertical during PA or PI was significantly greater in 2008 than it was in 1992. Higher scores correlated significantly with high head positions that were further behind the vertical in PIAF and Passage. Head angulations were orientated behind the vertical in all paces in 2008. These findings support the hypothesis that in recent years, FEI dressage judges have not penalized horses for a head position behind the vertical. Not only are elite level riders rewarded for having horses more often behind the vertical, but it's even condoned and taught in specific training circles. Almost any time you see elite level riders warming up their horses pre-competition, you are bound to see a handful of them riding their horses behind the vertical and even in extremely hyper-flexed positions, aka Rolker. Which the hypocrisy surrounding this is hilarious because plenty of low-level riders are certainly penalized for riding their horses behind the vertical and using roll cur in warm-ups or in competition. It's just really funny to me and sad and pathetic in many ways that elite-level riders somehow have this loophole surrounding what they do that makes all other lower-level riders look horrible. If this is the standard that we're setting for elite riders and this is what we're 
condoning at extremely high levels of our sports. Should we even consider this a sport? The forced and strained position of the horse's head and neck in roll cur can put pressure on the horse's spinal column and restrict its breathing and vision, potentially leading to physical harm such as back pain, respiratory problems, and injury to the horse's neck and throat. Psychological harm includes that horses are naturally responsive to their environment and the cues of their rider. Forcing a horse into such an unnatural position for extended periods of time can be distressing for the animal and can lead to behavioral problems such as anxiety and aggression, which is shown quite often at elite level competitions. I mean, has anybody watched Dressage Hub? Do we even have to wonder why these horses went into the arena so stressed already? Or can we get a pretty good gauge of what happened during their warm-ups? Pain and discomfort include tight reins, forceful riding, which can cause pain in the horse's mouth and neck, as well as causing chafing and rubbing from the reins. Reduced athletic performance in horses includes all the horses that are trained with roll cur regularly have a reduced athletic performance due to physical harm and psychological stress, as well as reduced flexibility and range of motion in their neck and back. In summary, the use of roll cur is widely regarded as inhumane and harmful to horses. I don't don't even know why this is still being debated at this point because there is a long list of studies regarding why roll cur is bad, not just physically, but psychologically for horses. And I think it's always funny when I hear people say, but it's really a gray area and we need more studies to conclude data. Pretty much every area is a gray area with every study. There's always more studies that could be done or conducted on any topic. Nothing is finite. Nothing is set in stone with any study. All studies say more studies are needed. You can't use that as a cop out when we have a handful and more of studies on the effects of roll cur, the negative effects of roll cur, and you just want to sit there and say, but we just need more studies on it. How many more do we need? A hundred? Two hundred? For FEI to take this seriously? For you guys to actually start punishing your elite riders? Now, if you think that riding a horse in such a hyper-flexed position is okay, acceptable, to be condoned, that there's nothing wrong with it, then not only are you a bad rider and you don't know anything about training, animal welfare, biomechanics of your horse, but you're also just a shitty person. It is imperative that we consider the welfare of equine athletes that are at the center of all of these competitions. The persistent disregard of their well-being and evidence of FEI's lack of action against roll cur and other abusive practices raises serious questions about the ethics of horse sports at the elite levels. As enthusiasts and supporters of these events, it is our responsibility to demand better for the horses and to hold the governing bodies accountable for ensuring their welfare. The future of horse sports rests on our collective commitment to uphold the highest standards of equine care and protection. It is our responsibility as a whole. If FEI won't listen, we will make them listen. I am sick, sick of seeing professional riders represent equestrian sports in such horrible, horrendous, and deplorable manners at such high levels in front of so many people. The use of abusive techniques such as roll cur is 100% unacceptable and runs counter to the principles of fair play and animal welfare that should be at the forefront of any horse sport. Only by holding the FEI accountable can we ensure that the future of horse sports is built on a foundation of respect for the welfare of all horses.